ナモアミラブツナモアミラブツナモアミラブツウォーカムウォンツアゲントカフルウィハンガンジーブーディスティンプルズサンデーユーチューブサービス Today's service is for October 22nd, 2021. And、um, today we were actually going to have a、um, in person service in the, in the church, but because of COVID,、uh, we had to pull back on that because of the higher numbers that we're experiencing here in Hawaii and in Maui.、Uh, we had to、um, pull back on the, on the uh, um, in person services. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, we may be able to do it again next month, at least one time, but we'll see. Um, we'll keep you, we'll just have to take it, play it by ear for that. So, today's service、uh, includes our family gratitude remembrance,、um, and that is、uh, in the form of an aspiration. So, we'll begin the service, or we already actually began the service with the concho, the ringing of the temple bell, which、uh, helps us to come to a mindful appreciation、uh, to listen to the Dharma. After that, Uh, after my opening words, we will have the chanting of the Vandana and Tisarana, and then、um, we will have the, uh, the uh, aspiration for family gratitude remembrance. When we have the in person service, we are able to read the names of those remembered、uh, who have memorial services or who, whose families would just like to remember them, families or friends would just like to remember them. Um, but、uh, because this is a public video, we, for privacy reasons, we can't read the names. But、uh, those who are listening, if you, you, know, if you do uh, uh, have someone on the list、uh, of being remembered, or if you just like to remember any loved ones, please bring them to mind when we have the aspiration. So,、um, following that, we will chant the Sutra. And today we will chant Jusege. Normally, we've been chanting the、uh, English version of Jusege. It is the.、Uh, Part of the sutra in, that tells the story of Amida Buddha. It's a mythical story, but in this uh, uh, story, um, uh, the, the, the Bodhisattva Dharmakara is, is um, um, making his vows uh, to uh, save all beings. And so, this is a kind of a hymn that he sings, a poem or, uh, that he recites or sings,、um, at Jusege, and it is a Uh, it, it means the, the verses、uh, reaffirming the vows. So he's reaffirming these important vows to save all beings.、Uh, following、uh, the chanting of the sutra, we will recite the golden chain of love, and then I will share some thoughts about the Dharma with you, Buddhist teaching. And then、uh, after that, we will chant the metta or the loving kindness meditation. So in, uh, in, in uh, 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 ancient forms of Buddhism, the metta bhavana. Uh, means loving kindness practice is something that's、uh, practiced every day by monks, and they will、um, go through this very long list of, of、uh, all, all, every possible being that one can encounter、um, and, uh, and express a wish them、uh, well being.、Uh, so,、uh, loving kindness. So,、uh, we have a short version of that that we chant every, we've been chanting every week. Following that, we will sing the Nembutsu, and then I'll have some closing words and announcements for you. Okay, so thank you very much、uh, for joining us today, and uh, uh, please put your hands together in reverence in, in Gasho as we recite the Nembutsu. Namo Amida Butsu. 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 Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Homage to him, the exalted one. The enlightened one, the supremely awakened one, Bhutang Saranangachami, Dhamma. 
mong saranang gachami sangang saranang gachami I go to the Buddha for guidance I go to the Dharma for guidance. I go to the Sangha for guidance. Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu. Today, Kahului Hanganji Sangha has gathered together to remember our loved ones who have passed away, particularly those whose memorials are observed in this month of August. In appreciation of them, let us reflect deeply on the transience, the uncertainty, and the impermanence of our existence so that we may all awaken to realize the true significance of living. May we live our lives as an expression of appreciation for the limitless kindness we constantly receive each and every moment. And let us seek to repay our debt of gratitude to all our departed loved ones for the great benevolence that they have bestowed upon us. In deep awareness of the many blessings we constantly receive from others, let us repeat the name which is true reality itself, measureless light, boundless life. Namo Amidabutsu. 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 Jusetsu Murio Jukyo Jusege Gagon Chosegon Hishim Jodo Shigon Fumanzo Seifu Josho Ga Gahomurio Ko Fuhidai Seshu Fusai Shobingu Seifu Josho Ga Gashi Jobutsu Do Myosho Choji Po Kukyomi Shomon Seifu Josho Ga Ryoku Jin Shonen Joe Shubon Gyo Shigum Jodo Isho Tenin Shi Jin Diki Endai Ko Fushom Sai Do Shoujo San Kumyo Ko Sai Shu Yakunan Kai Hi Chi Egen Me Shi Komo An Hei Soku Sho Akudo Tsu Datsu Zen Shumo Ko So Jo Man Zo I O Ro Ji Po Nichi Gatsu Shu Ju Ki Ten Ko On Fu Gen I Shu Kai Ho Zo Ko Se Ku Do Ku Ho Jo O Dai Shu Ju Se Po Shi Shi Ku 
くよいさいぶつぐそくしゅとくはんがんねしつじょうまんとくいさんがいおにょうぶつむげちつだつみふしょがんがくえりきとしさいしょそしがんやこかだいせんおかんどこくしょてんにんとうちんみょけ Golden Chain of Love I am a link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I must keep my link bright and strong. I will try to be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I will try to think pure and beautiful thoughts, to say pure and beautiful words, and to do pure and beautiful deeds. Knowing that on what I do now depends not only my happiness or unhappiness, but also that of others. May every link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love become bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Welcome once again, and at this time I would like to. Share some thoughts about the Buddha's teaching with you. Would you please join me as I put my ha- as we put our hands together and recite the Nembutsu? Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Um, as I have done in in uh, in the past, and something I have done in the, um, in in our temple services as well as what what I kind of call odds and ends, and uh, what it is is. Either a, a, a collection of um, quotations from books um, that I have read, or articles, and so on, and things that I think are are, are meaningful and and bear discussing. And so I'll ha- you know do a few of those and t- uh, read them and then talk about them. And um, and then uh, uh, that's a normal thing. That's something I've done a, a few times, and it's it's a kind of a different way, a fun way to uh, uh, think about. The Buddhist teaching, and um, also, uh, 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 in sometimes also I have Dharma messages that I've kind of uh, had an, uh, something I started, but didn't, but went on to something else instead, used a different idea or whatever, you know, or for an article for for our newsletter and things like that. So I had a f- have a few, um, you know, uh, passages that uh, I started writing. Uh, 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 reflections that I started working on, and then didn't turn into a full-blown uh, article or or, or uh, um, message, but um, 
stuff that I thought was worth talking about. And then I, I and so I'm str I string a few of those together and we can have a little discussion about that today. So that's what I'd like to do um, today. And uh, so I have a few things uh, to share with you, a few thoughts, and then and, uh, I'll try to you know, fill, in, fill, it in, fill it out a little bit uh, extemporaneously, you might say. So, okay. So the first thing is called oneness. It's a very short, very short uh, uh, thought that uh, um, I thought, you know, I should talk about. And, um, and, and this is it. There really cannot be any religious concerns and issues which are outside of or separate from the concerns and issues of everyday life. Now, I think this is something that's forgotten about by, by religious people all the time, uh, even though, of course, everyday life problems are always, you know, uh, often brought to, uh, to, to, to the religion, religious side when, when they can't be solved. But so often, you know, that's the whole, that's sort of the old story that, you know, when you really have problems, then you go to religion. You know, that's when you, you, you know, that's when you pray or, <laughs> or you know, go and uh, 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 ask for solutions from the, from the minister or priest or whatever, you know. But, um, um, uh, but then we forget and then we go back to the things like, well, us, uh, everyday problems are just something that we have to solve through our cleverness, our, our everyday wisdom, our everyday, you know, technology, whatever it is. And then uh, and religious things are religious things, they're separate. And so many people treat religion that way. Um, and that's sort of why religion, I think, is uh, an object of scorn to, to many people as well. Um, uh, because it, 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 it doesn't seem to uh, be relevant to what's really going on in the world. And so we have to be very, uh, take that very seriously. The spiritual path is about uh, everyday life. Everyday life is the spiritual path. I think it can't be overstated. Um, if your spiritual life is something that you're looking for to, to get you out of the uh, everyday life, uh, in other words, uh, as a sort of an alternative uh, world, um, I think that you, know, you may want to th reflect on that because it, it, you may be, go be sort of dragged into a kind of fantasy r world. There's nothing wrong with fantasy in the right context, you know, if it, when it helps us, you know, good stories, fairy tales, things like that, myths, but um, uh, when it helps us to see reality more clearly, but not to escape from reality. And to see reality clearly, deeply, uh, meaningfully, um, um, spiritual teachings sh sh uh, shed light, shine light on, on, the, on reality, that helps us to, that helps reality to also to be transformed um, away from being simply uh, an, an, you know, a, a set, of, set of consequences based on, our, on our, our self-centered actions and becomes conditioned more by the spiritual teaching. So we really have to think that way. And that really today, you know, with, you know, I just got out of the line, you know, the terrible catastrophes going on all over the world, Afghanistan for one, um, uh, you know, global warming, climate change, uh, uh, climate catastrophes, you know, pollution, uh, social problems, injustice, uh, very, very serious things. And all of them, all of them uh, arise from our human uh, refusal to um, uh, really be guided by the true teachings uh, that 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 uh, religion offers us the true the true teachings of the Dharma the true teachings of whatever religion we we belong to if our religion guides us to have contempt for the world around us and to think only of ourselves in our group it's not true it's simply not um, so anyway that's the uh, just a, a place that you, I hope please continue to think about that just once again there can't be any religious concerns which are outside of or separate from the concerns and issues of everyday life okay so that's the f that's one now the next one um, is uh, called Buddhist then and now and uh, so basically um, uh, you know ordinary people who followed um, you know just thinking of Jodo Shinshu, our, our, our teaching, our Buddhist teaching, um, who followed the, the, uh, the, the founders of this, um, uh, this path, this type of uh, Pure Land path directed toward ordinary people. They were Honen and Shinran. Uh, and Shinran is considered the founder of Jodo Shinshu, but Honen was his teacher. So it's a Pure Land path. 
but uh, the people who were attracted to them, to their teachings, were actually were people who were full of anxiety. They were filled with anxiety uh, about their life, about the 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 uh, uh, the, the, uh, the guilt that they had um, for the lo the kind of livelihood that they had to live. So they. They carried on livelih livelihoods like hunting and fishing and, and things like that, uh, butchers and things like that, um, that uh, uh, they felt that were, they were taught was, were fraught with negative karma because they were harming, killing living beings. And, um, um, and they also were, were, meant to f were often made to feel that they were, because they were ordinary people, not the upper class, that they were already already uh, uh, suffering from bad karma that they had acquired in previous lives, you know. Um, but you know, th they felt that sense of shame, that sense of I'm doing the wrong thing, or I, I'm. But I can't. I have no choice. You know, if I don't do my livelihood, uh, I will starve. I, my family will starve. So that's how they, they, they de dealt with this. So they were attracted to Shinran's teaching that told them to say that Amida accepts you just as you are. So you can't help it. This is the way you, this is the, the livelihood that you, you, you have. Um, and um, uh, everyone is filled with a, a, a negative uh, 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 action. Everyone performs negative actions. Uh, we do the best we can, but uh, we struggle this way, and nevertheless, Amida, especially Amida, especially uh, those who who uh, are are Im Im find it impossible to be perfect, to to attain perfection or good or p or true goodness, uh, especially the, those people. Amida's great compassion is directed toward Amida's you know, great compassion itself manifested uh, in this you know in the. the um, a wonderful life that we're able to live just in the present moment, just as we are. So, um, um, you know, th reflecting on this, I, you know, I thought about how today we do so many things that cause harm to people and to animals, plants, and the whole planet. Uh, and and do we do it because, oh my gosh, if I don't do this, um, you know, I will starve to death. My family will starve. Um, you know, of course, people struggle to make a living, so the same things apply. But so much of what we do today is is to uh, has sort of generated. You know, we, we've we've ratcheted it up. You know, to to a, a kind of level of 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 uh, damage that we create in the in the world and to each other, um, so that uh, you know to maintain a kind of lifestyle which is which is so high. You know, if you really stop and think about it, we have a we we want to enjoy a comfortable life, and we ha want to have all these kind of conveniences and perks that, you know, would would have been undreamed of in the time of um, even by the uh, upper classes in the time of Shinran and Hon. In fact, in most of human history, people didn't have any of those kinds of conveniences and uh, uh, comforts. They had to life was very difficult. So you know. Uh, just sa staying alive, staying fed was the main thing. So the people of the past, of Ho uh, for example, of Honen and Shinran's time, they acted deliberately in order to survive. They knew if you were, if you had, if you earned your living by hunting, which was considered, you know, a defiled trade, or leather working, or butcher, uh, fisherman, any of those things were considered defiled by the Buddhist, uh, in, you know, institutions of those times. Um, uh, they, 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 but they had no choice. That was to, that was their karma to do that. But they felt shame for what they had to do. They felt tormented by the fact that they couldn't be truly compassionate to all living beings. Though in our age, we cause harm to others with a kind of casual th uh, thoughtlessness. You know, we have little or no regard for the suffering that we cause. And it's out of sight. We keep it out of sight. That's part of our cleverness, you know, our, 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 our sort of calculating way of, of, of living. And we feel very little or probably no shame for what we do at all. We, we do whatever it takes to make sure that we can have this pleasurable and comfortable life. Now, that's, that's a generalization, but, you think, but if you really think about it, you know, really think about the level that we expect to live at the comforts we expect to have, you know, just the simple things, you know, the, you know, uh, uh, that we have are in our, uh, 
uh, our homes and make, air, and make life easy. Um, push button conveniences and then of course we have all these electronics and things <laughs> which is of course what is allowing us to have this video but um, you know uh, all those things we have to we, we seldom count the cost all the all the global warming effect from having all these uh, 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 all these internet uh, services running all the time and it's a lot by the way a lot so we do, do need to think about these things we, we need to at least generate a sense of responsibility um, it's not just all given to us that we have a right to all these conveniences and comforts. So um, anyway, I thought about that one. And um, I have another one here to uh, share with you. And um, it's called Causes and Conditions. So we're all on the same theme here. The problems that have developed in the world today are really largely the result of the conditions that have been created by us modern uh, powers, uh, uh, mostly Western uh, 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 societies originally, but you know, it's all kind of mixed up now. But, um, uh, and so with the, the, this kind of industrial, you know, very materialistic kind of um, uh, basis of society, uh, we have uh, been I I interfering and exploiting the resources and the environments and the peoples throughout the world. And as a result, we're not only destroying those natural environments everywhere that everyone depends on, but we have spread our kind of distorted and corrupted materialistic value system everywhere in the world as well. That's not inherent to Western or Eastern society, by the way. That's something I think we've created uh, by uh, putting our faith in technology, putting our faith in 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 our ability to manipulate and, and dominate the world without the humility, the sense of respect that must be there in order to use the resources of the world properly and to, u and to relate to each other properly. So, um, you know, also, and then on top of that, whenever, wherever we have caused harm, we, and I'm not gonna, you can figure this out for yourself, you know what I'm talking about, we point to those that we have exploited and damaged who are now angry at, at us, very angry at us, and we call them terrorists, right, or w other kinds of names. They are the bad guys, not us. That's what we always, that's our, our reflex action. Oh, th those guys are bad because they, they're terrorists. They do bad things to us. Um, but in Buddhism, we're taught that every condition is inevitably the result of causes which the wisdom of the Dharma guides us to take responsibility for. So conditions are not the result of good guys and bad guys. Absolutely everything in the world is interconnected. The Buddha Dharma teaches us that every view is subjective, that everyone filters their perceptions through their uh, preconceptions about, about life, about the world. They already believe this, so they, they filter, they see what they want to see, in other words. And our preconceptions, our, our, our uh, pre-digested opinions about the world are based on our, what the Buddha called, attachments or blind passions. And that, of course, the Buddha said, that is what causes suffering. That's uh, the, 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 the bottom line of this equation attachments, blind passions cause suffering and we base, we take our blind passions to be true, uh, to be a, a real view of life and then we base all of our opinions on them and then all of our actions. Circles and circles of suffering come out of that. So no one, however, not one single person actually has pure intentions or a pure view of reality. So even the best possible intentions, you know, oh, well, we're doing this for good. We're trying to help people, right? Whatever it is, we always, we assume, oh, I'm good. I'm doing this for good. And I have good intentions, right? They always set up a cause, a chain of causation that the end result is, 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 un, is not predictable, right? Well, it might be predictable 
to the really wise, <laughs> really wise person, to the Buddha maybe, but to us. If we, we have the wrong idea about what our intentions really are, uh, we're going to predict, oh, this is all going to work out well, it's all going to have a great um, you know, outcome, when in fact uh, it, everything really comes to grief. So we really need to think deeply about that. Now finally, I think if we look at Buddhism well, the Buddhist contrib contribution to really building a good world, a world of uh, well-being for everyone, peace for all living beings, um, Buddhism's contribution to, uh, is very simple, really. This is what it teaches us. Buddhism teaches us, always doubt your own sense of being in the right. Always doubt your own sense of being in the right. And number two, always assume that you are at least partly in the wrong. Always assume that you are at least partly in the wrong. If we adhere to those two um, pieces of advice, I think, that we can distill from the Buddha's teaching, we're going to have a lot different outcome of, of our, our actions in the world. Um, so that's, uh, that, that is uh, the thoughts on causes and conditions. Um, now, I have another one, uh, one last thing to share with you. So this is called silencing life. Now, um, mere, h hardly a long, not very long ago, a mere 200 years ago, countless whales, I, I, I read an article about this long, a while ago, countless whales swam freely throughout the oceans of this planet. Whales communicate with something like a musical language, including dialects specific to groups or clans of whales. And they can call to each other across vast distances of thousands of miles. Can you imagine that? Thousands of miles of ocean, they can call to each other. And uh, what do they say over such vast distances? Identifying themselves, calling out to relatives, friends, mates, talking about the availability of food or other conditions? What are they saying to each other? Maybe they're simply expressing the joy of their living. But this is not limited only to whales. In, in various ways, all living things, whether in the form of a whale or a bacterium, resonate with this song of life. A song, however, that we humans seem to have forgotten, that we seem to want to silence. Today, many whales have been hunted uh, nearly to extinction or to extinction by humans, despite international attempts to save them. Even those who survive suffer from conditions drastically altered by the doings of humans. Pollution of the earth, of the oceans, now uh, uh, changes brought about by global warming, um, uh, uh, warming of the oceans, changing of currents and so on, and, and also uh, by the countless, by the uh, constant noise. It's called acoustic smog. The ocean is just full of noise from the numberless ships that are bearing, by, uh, of course, the uh, infinite number of disposable and inessential consumer goods that we humans have become addicted to and for the possession of which we are willing to sacrifice the lives of all living things, including ourselves. And going back to those comforts and conveniences, all the boats, you know, steaming across the ocean, making so much noise, bringing us all of our toys. Because of these conditions, the voices of whales can now only be heard over a distance of maybe 100 miles, so from thousands of miles down to 100 miles. This seems to me to be a, a great metaphor for what we humans are doing to the earth through our restless, our restless and utterly selfish grasping, grasping after things f to somehow make us feel um, like, like uh, life is like things are okay, you know. Through all this restless grasping and, and, and uh, um, we, the, the, the cause, which of course is the cause of all suffering, that's our blind passions again. We are silencing the song of life throughout the world. So that's our doing. 
silencing the song of life throughout the world. Um, you know, there's all, it's not simple matter, of course. There's all kinds of, um, humans have created their own sort of network of interconnectedness that isn't a very, isn't such a wholesome one as, the, as is the natural world and um, economic and so on. And um, it's very difficult to change these things, but uh, it's, it begins with us when we begin to say, no, I don't need all that stuff. I need something else. I need face-to-face -face contact. I need, I need to listen to others. I need quiet and simplicity in my life. So that's a sad, uh, tragic reality of what's happened to, these, to the whales, but that's one, one being, one, one type of being, and it's happening to, to all beings, including ourselves. Maybe humans are having the worst consequences of our actions and don't really quite realize it yet. But um, you know, um, that's not the end of the story. Um, awakening to the reality facing this difficult reality is hard. Uh, facing what we're doing in the world. It used to be you only had to f kind of face yourself, but you know, and, 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 and wake up to your own kind of um, you know, negative behavior and, 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 and make the, uh, uh, through the help of others, be able to correct and change. But now, now the, it's so complicated and stakes are so high. But nothing's really changed. It, it all begins with me. It all begins with, with, with each of us. And when I, through the help of great compassion, we call Amida Buddha, uh, realize my selfish self, I can, I, I am naturally guided and able to start making changes that will reverberate uh, uh, through the world. Uh, we all have to take this seriously. This is a really serious thing, you know. Life is, uh, it's not, life is not really a joke. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things to laugh at in our life, fortunately. Uh, uh, humor is very important, but life itself is not a joke. It, it's, it's such a precious thing, this present moment of life. You can make a wor the, the world change right now ch by beginning with yourself, opening ourselves to that boundless compassion, realizing what's, what the real priorities are, what's really important in our life. So thank you very much for listening. Let's put our hands together in Gasho and recite the Nembutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May I be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to me. May I live in peace and harmony. May my family be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my teachers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my friends be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May strangers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my enemies be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo
would like to thank you very much for joining us today uh, for our Kahului Honganji Sunday YouTube service. Um, hope that you were able to take something meaningful away um, from our service today and that it helps you in the week to come and in, in, in living your life. Um, it's a difficult time, it continues to be a difficult time and we have setbacks like we're having now with the, with the virus, but uh, we just, uh, I think we need to always take this, uh, whatever the conditions are, we always do need to reflect deeply and uh, uh, try to find the, the uh, deeper meaning uh, of, of the challenges that we face uh, uh, in our ev everyday life. Um, I think this virus, among, among other things, is, is calling all, all of us to uh, uh, think about what our real priorities in life are and what is really important. And it's something that's, uh, in a, you might say, uh, really overdue that we, we ought to reflect that way. Of course, we don't need uh, terrible things or uh, pandemics or catastrophes to, to uh, um, uh, we, it's, not, it's not a necessity to make us reflect. But unfortunately, sometimes we don't reflect until we have these problems. So. Um, in any case, I, I do hope that uh, things will get better soon and uh, that we will all be better as a result of this uh, situation. Um, so um, uh, I do have a couple of announcements um, today. So as I mentioned at the beginning, today's in-person service has been canceled because of the rise in numbers. Um, so next week, August 29th, is, our fifth, is a fifth Sunday, and generally we don't have a service on fifth Sunday, no service and no... Um, uh, um, and no, no YouTube service as well. So um, fo the, the following Sundays uh, in December, we're planning on having the YouTube services every week. Um, but uh, as far as in-person services here in the temple, um, just have to play that by ear, go week by week and see how things go. Generally speaking, in, in since the COVID time, uh, since we started having services again, we've been trying to have at least the fourth Sunday, which is our family gratitude. So we'll see what happens. Um, uh, so uh, an another announcement is that we have um, a fundraiser coming up. It's a food item fundraiser, um, and there are two items that are um, um, for sale for um, uh, by by tickets, which are sent out to all, all of our members. If anyone else is interested, uh, or if you did receive tickets and you would like more, you can give the temple office a call. The pickup it, it's a pickup type of fundraiser, and it will be. Between sev the pickup will be between sev September 29th and October 2nd. So all the information uh, will be available, um, you know, when you uh, uh, get the letter or if you call the office. Um, it's twenty dollars for the two tickets, and then you get two items for that. Um, it's a frozen type, so y you can, t uh, you know, they can be kept. So, and then um, following, and then the next announcement. Uh, uh, tentatively, uh, Maui uh, Maui District will be having a uh, Nembutsu seminar. It's a kind of it's a, a, a Buddhist uh, learning event, and that will be on November 13th and 14th, Saturday and Sunday, at Wailuku Honganji Mission. Uh, and once again, uh, due to the COVID situation, we don't know if it will be in person or be an online through Zoom kind of event. We don't know yet, so we'll see. Okay, so thank you very much, and. Uh, um, hope to see you again next week. Thank you. Let's put our hands together in Gasho and recite the Nembutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu.